Hey everyone, this is Randy from BibleBuyingGuide.com. Today I am going to look at one of the best wide margin Bibles on the market. At least that's my opinion. Thomas Nelson has released the Sovereign Collection in wide margin. And this edition was made in India. Something I very much appreciate. And I'm glad that they've, they've made that change. Uh, so they've sent me the Purple Leather Soft. And they've sent me the Black Genuine Leather. So let's just take a quick look at both of them. And I'll go through their features and all that. So the Leather Soft looks like real leather. In fact, I think you could show that to most people and they wouldn't know the difference. It looks amazing. It has a floral debossed pattern on the front and on the back. With a framed outline around both front and back. Perimeter stitching. Four raised hubs, a little ding there, I didn't even notice that when I was taking the photos. And then gold stamping. Only problem with this one though is that it has a paper liner. And then the liner doubles as the presentation page. The text block is the same between both uh, editions. This one has the purple ribbon that matches the purple cover. And then red ribbon for the New Testament. Gold edges, a little bit of a, almost a little bit of a rounded spine which I like a lot. That becomes a little bit more pronounced in the, in the genuine leather. The genuine leather, I think, is the star of the show. And if you can only buy one, buy the genuine leather. This one is impressive. I like this Bible a lot. That does not feel like regular genuine leather. It feels more like cowhide. That does feel like cowhide to me. So it has the same three line frame around the front, but then it has Holy Bible stamped in gold. Then the spine, four raised hubs with gold printing. A little bit more rounded spine, which I like. I'm a rounded spine guy, but I don't want it too round. I like that. I like that a lot. That is excellent. Now this one has a vinyl paste down liner. And I'm glad they went with paste down. I know edge line will last longer. But it also depends on the liner material. And the original Sovereign had a few problems with the liner, in my opinion. And I'll show that as we go. But the reason I like this liner is because it stays open. Just stays open on its own. You can see a little bit of cockling here. You can see that in the front and in the back. It's not bad. It's just enough to, to notice. And it's also enough to make the paper a little noisy. Not too bad. Not too bad. But there's our information printed in India using the typeface designed by 2K Denmark. Now, everything else about this is the same as the regular Sovereign, with the exception of two things. First is gold highlights instead of red. Instead of red only. It also has red, but it, it has changed the drop caps to gold. And then adds a margin. And the margin is interesting because the inner margin adds a little bit extra space so that you have a one-inch usable in the inner and then you have one inch in the outer then the bottom seven eighths then the top around five eighths but look how easy that stays open that's beautiful now the other one the leather soft doesn't want to stay open that well but I mean these are new I've only had them for a few days I haven't even separated the pages on on the leather soft listen do we use this one and I've used the genuine leather. I've actually preached from the genuine leather once and I loved it. Paper is excellent. It's uh, pretty sure it's 36 GSM paper but it's not exactly the same paper as found in the original Sovereign. I like this paper better because it has a little bit more of an eggshell color to it. Not much and I only noticed it when they're side by side. Anyway, Sovereign we have about a two paragraph in book introduction with about six to seven words per line. This one is a nine point font, while the original is a 9.5. In fact, I don't even really see much difference. Even sitting them side by side, it's hard to tell the difference. References across the bottom with translator's footnotes and glossary on the page, where I like it. Red for the section headings, for the chapter number, for the verse numbers, and bold verse numbers to indicate paragraphs across the top we have the book name chapter and verse number 
and the outer corner in red, then the page number in the middle in black, and then in gold in the inner margin we have the page summary. I'm liking this one. I can see this being my preaching Bible. The font is large enough for me. It's good and dark. Printed with line matching. And the show throughs, not much at all. Not much so through at all. Psalms in a single column. And that's a good balance on the Psalms. It doesn't break every line. Uh, like right here, we see uh, part of the line and then it goes to a semicolon and then continues the line. It breaks it in good places, in my opinion. This does follow the Canterbury design. The whole thing follows the Canterbury design. They do one thing the Canterbury doesn't. A couple of things it doesn't. Um, it adds Proverbs in single column. I would like to see all poetry in single column, but I'll take what I can get. I do like the way this looks. And then the red letter in the New Testament. paper is highly writable I'll show you some well I'll go ahead and show you a note because the concordance is also in wide margin I decided to write some definitions in the concordance and I'm using a green I meant to pick up a different one but I, I grabbed this one uh, this is a zero five pigma micron the other side of the page not much show through at all and there you can see that cockling. It's not much. Just enough to, to mention. I just wanted to mention it because it doesn't stand out very much, but it, it is there. But look at the other tools that we have here. I find the paper easy enough to turn. And I'm guessing on the GSM. I think it's 36. So in the back we have a couple of tables, Miracles of Jesus, Parables of Jesus, One Year Reading Plan, and then our Concordance. And all this is in wide margin, every bit of that. So they've just taken the Sovereign and made it in the wide margin and then changed the drop caps to gold. The gold looks great. I suspect that this little bit of cockling here is because of this is this company's first try at publishing this in India and I'm okay with that I will take it and then back here we've got the Zondervan maps that Thomas Nelson uses does not include an index but they are annotated well they're easy to read it's on the thick semi-glossy paper actually it might not, not even be semi-glossy I don't even think it's semi-glossy. It might not even be that much. It's more like a matte finish. I like this. I like that a lot. And then you can see the... looks like the reinforced tape here. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure that's reinforced. But it looks like reinforced tape. So the paste down won't last as long as... And there's a little bit of a page wrinkle there. Another page wrinkle here here and there. Not Not too bad. But the, uh, the paste down won't last as long as edge line, but I prefer it because of how easy that stays open. And I want my pages flat. And this does something that the original didn't do in the genuine leather. That rises higher, that spine rises higher when you have it open. And that brings that inner margin up. And when it does, it makes it easier to write in the inner margin. I like that. I'll take that. I like that. So overall size and weight, about six and five eighths by nine and three quarters by one and three quarters. It's a little thick for me, but it's also balanced well. Just a touch over three pounds, 0.9 ounces, and then the imitation leather, two pounds, 15.7 ounces. So let's see how the Sovereign Wide Margin compares to a few other Bibles. First, of course, is the original Sovereign. So, Genuine Leather and Imitation Leather. Start.
start with the imitation and you can see the imitation leather is a smoother imitation versus the more greeny look of the new one they both have the paper liner and this one is the one that I used the most the reason is because of the way it opens and it stays flat or flatter and it stays open better in the front not perfect but stays open better in the front and it stays flat that's what I like I want a flat opening and I don't want to fight it I want it to stay there I want it to stay open but the paper is slightly whiter the font is slightly larger but not much just enough get these out of the way pagination is the same of course so let's go to 981 so there they are exactly the same and here's how they compare Shother is a little bit more noticeable on the regular edition the paper is slightly whiter and I'm not exactly sure what causes that show through to be a little bit more noticeable but the wide margin looks a little better it looks a little bit a little bit cleaner a little better next the genuine leather editions and the genuine leather on the original on the regular size is a sh has a shinier finish and it's not as soft flexibility is about the same but it's not as soft feeling and of course I'm gonna prefer I'm gonna prefer the wide margin now my problem with the original and the reason it didn't make my my favorites list that edge line with vinyl liner I don't know how long it's gonna last but it's very stiff extremely stiff and it fights me and you know I'm not gonna use a Bible that fights me I just won't it, if it's worth breaking in I'll give it a try and this is but I don't like that hump there it's constantly wanting to fight me and it's you know it's got that hump there and I just don't like the way that works also when you open it wide open you've got all the way down into the to the gutter there and the reason for that is that spine stays flat it might be better for the spine but it doesn't open far enough for me either way here's how they compare let's turn to 922 Comparison is exactly the same as the previous. I mean, they're the same Bible. But you can see that red letter versus the gold for the drop caps. To give you an idea of the size comparison, I didn't show on the other. Thickness is the same, which makes me think that the GSM on the paper is the same. And then there's the difference in footprint. Not a massive difference not really it's more noticeable from above but when you set them side by side you notice the bigger difference is the width another I want to show is the McLaren because footprints exactly the same identical so if you know the McLaren size then you know the footprint of the sovereign wide margin the difference is the thickness the McLaren is thinner so this will help you decide if you need the wide margin or the larger print because here's what the difference is larger font wider margin and that's really it of course the Sovereign has book introductions and fewer references other than that and in a concordance and the the tables in the back but other than that they're about the same This one, specifically, is my preaching Bible. I like the way it stays open. I like that flatness in the front, just to stay open, stay flat. But I'm very much considering changing to the Sovereign, simply because I don't necessarily need the font size to be this large as it is in the McLaren. Either, even, even though I love it, I don't necessarily need it that large. And If that's the case, then I can switch over and have a wide margin. And, you know, I'm not going to use the references behind the pulpit anyway. You know, I'm always thinking preaching Bible. 
and I also do like a concordance and I like the tables that this one has and those are missing in the McLaren next is the most obvious comparison because of design and that is the Schuyler Canterbury wide margin here is the size difference Canterbury is huge compared to the Sovereign and of course we're talking about a different price range here because the Canterbury is higher quality materials goat skin edge lined with real leather 40 GSM paper the design is the same uh, this is the original design and then the Sovereign follows the design of the Canterbury so here is how they compare let's show the red letter because both are red letter editions noticeably darker red in the Canterbury Canterbury is made in the Netherlands and has paper in the back then concordance with a smaller font now this is the first edition of the Canterbury wide margin and then the glossary back here and this one does not include translators footnotes next is the Cambridge wide margin the Concord which is one of my all-time favorite Bibles And this one is still over twice the price as the Sovereign. Made in the Netherlands, 38 GSM paper, might even be 40 GSM by now, I don't know. And then thinner, but wider. The height is about the same, but noticeably wider. And then here is the design differences. If you're familiar with the Concord, which is one of my favorite Bibles of all time, you will understand the differences. And then Psalms and Proverbs, everything is just in, in uh, verse by verse. So here's how they compare. And this one that does rise a little higher making the inner margin slightly easier to use and then in the back we've got almost 80 pages of notebook paper and index paper index pages all that together is around 80 pages then maps and then glossary concordance and then the Cambridge glossary That's an excellent Bible. So that is my quick look at the Wide Margin Sovereign. Now, the Wide Margin Sovereign is going to be the one that I'm going to recommend you buy. And the reason is it is available in multiple cover options, $40, $80, depending on uh, where you buy it. But, you know, the MSRP, Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price, on the imitation is $60. And on the Genuine Leather is $120. But I have seen these on Christian Book. This one is $39.95, something like that. And then the Genuine Leather is $80. I recommend getting the Genuine Leather. I just like it that much better, that much more. But if you can't afford that, then by all means, grab the Imitation. And if you want to get started, use the Imitation. And then move up to the Genuine Leather later. It's a good place to get started on using the Wide Margin Bible. And they're both excellent for their money if you want to learn more about marking in your bible pick up my book easy bible marking guide it's available in print and on kindle on amazon and i show you tricks and tips on how to how to mark your bible and how to use the margins and, and all that some ideas and then thomas nelson did supply these in exchange for an honest review and my honest review is number one i am grateful that they went to india number two i love this Bible I like these a lot I wouldn't mind if it had a little bit more paper in the back for notes but at the same time that would make it thicker and for me we're already at that that thickness level that I'm, I'm okay with 
I like that the inner margin comes up higher. I like that it's got a little bit extra space, giving you an inch to write in. I wouldn't mind if they could fix the cockling just a little bit, but that's not enough to keep me from using it. It's just, just something to point out. More than anything, it makes the page turning a little noisy. Yep, I do like the design. I do like this a lot. So I will place links in the notes so that you can make a purchase if you're interested and also a link to BibleBuyingGuide.com to the written review with more information and I'll place a link to my book, Easy Bible Working Guide. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.